Hello students, welcome to my channel Learning History Made Easy. In today's video, I will be starting with the second paper in your passing package series. Total, I will be uploading three papers for your passing package series. First one is already completed. This is the second paper. It is a preparatory paper 2022. If anyone wants to download the PDF notes of the same, you can go to the Insta module link which will be given in the description box. So before getting into the video, if anyone is seeing the channel for the first time or if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and also share it with your friends and also click the bell button to receive notifications whenever I upload new videos. So without wasting time, let us get into today's video. So as I have told, this is the preparatory examination paper 2022. This is the second paper in your passing package series. So first, let us see the one mark questions. Okay. Part A. Answer any 10 of the following questions in one word or one sentence each. As I have told in the last paper, there will be uh, 15 questions out of which you will have to write any 10. Each answer carries one mark. What is excavation? The scientific digging of earth for unearthing sources is called as excavation. What is Kshetra? Cultivated land. Who wrote Arthashastra? Kautilya. Name the first Kannada inscription. Halmidi inscription. Which was the capital of the Rashtrakutas? Manyaketa. Which was the royal emblem of the Hoysalas? Sala killing a tiger. Next question. Who was called the parrot of India? Amir Khusro. Who was the master architect of the Taj Mahal? Ustad Isa. Name the philosophy of Shankaracharya. Advaita philosophy. Who was the founder of Sikhism? Guru Nanak. When was the British East India Company established? 1600. When did Queen Lakshmi Bhai of Jansi, sorry, why did Queen Lakshmi Bhai of Jansi revolt against the British? The British refused to recognize her adopted son and so she revolted against the British. What is Shuddhi movement? It was a movement started by Swami Dayananda Saraswati to bring back the converted Muslims and Christians into Hindu fold. Okay, so once more I will tell, Shuddhi movement was a movement started by Swami Dayanand Saraswati. It was to bring back the converted Muslims and Christians back into Hindu fold. Expand KPCC, Karnataka Pradesh Congress Committee. And the 15th question, what was the popular slogan of Isur? Isuru Kottaru, Isuru Kodevu, that is, how many ever villages be given, Isuru will not be led. So these are the 15 one mark question, out of which you will have to write any 10. Each question carries one mark. Now let us move on to part B, second main. Answer any 10 of the following questions in two words or two sentences each. So here again you will have 15 questions out of which any 10 you will have to write. Each question will carry 2 marks. So let us see the 16th question. What is the meaning of the term Paleolithic? Answer Old Stone Age. Paleo Old Lithic Stone Age. Paleolithic Old Stone Age. Name any two learned women of Vedic period. Gargi and Maitri. Name any two well-known universities of the Gupta period, Takshashila, Nalanda. Name any two literary works of Harshavardhana, Priyadarshika and Ratnavali. Who erected Gomateshwara statue and where? Chaundaraya at Shravanabalagola. Who built the Kailasnatha temple and where was it built? Krishna one at Elora. Who started Vikrama era and when? Vikramaditya 6 in 1076. Which 
which was the important taxes collected by Shivaji. Chaut and Sardesh Mukhi. Who was Mohammad Gawan and where did he build the madrasa? Mohammad Gawan was a chief minister of Muhammad Shah III and he built his madrasa at Bidar. Who were the parents of Madhvacharya? Narayana Bhatta and Vedavati. Name any two important orders among the Sufis. Chisti order and Suhravadi order. Name any two trading centers of Portuguese in India. Goa and Bombay. What was the immediate cause of the first war of Indian independence? That is the introduction of new Enfield rifle by the British with a cartridge covered by cow and pig fat was the immediate cause of first war of Indian independence. I have just explained it in one more sentence. The cover of the cartridge had to be torn off with teeth and Indian soldiers refused to do so as cow was sacred for Hindus and pig was prohibited for Muslims. So the basic uh, immediate cause is the introduction of Enfield rifle by the British with the cartridge covered with cow and pig fat and this cart uh, cover had to be bitten off with teeth before loading into the rifle. And uh, Indian soldiers refused to do so because cow was sacred for Hindus and pig was prohibited for Muslims. 29th question. Which was the two newspapers published by Vivekananda? Prabuddha Bharata and Udbodhana. And the 30th question. Mention any two members of the JVP committee. Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Vallabhai Patel and Patabi Sitaramaya. Any two you can write. Jawaharlal Nehru, Vallabhai Patel and Patabi Sitaramaya. So these are the 15 2 mark questions. Now let us move on to the next main part C that is 5 mark questions. Answer any 6 of the following questions in 15 to 20 sentences each. Total 10 questions will be given out of which you will have to write any 6 and each question will carry 5 marks. So in today's video we will see two 5 mark questions. Balance I will continue in the next video. So let us see the first 5 mark question that is 31st question. Unity in diversity is a unique feature of Indian history. Explain. So regarding this answer you will have to divide it in two parts. One is regarding the unity and one is regarding the diversity. So first just one sentence introduction you can write because the answer is a little long. So unity in diversity, India is a land of diversity. So in which all ways India is diverse, that is different. First thing is physical diversity. India has the coldest places, the hottest desert, snowy mountains of Himalayas, evergreen forest, coastal areas etc. So India is a mix of all these things. It has the coldest place, hottest desert, snowy mountains, evergreen forest, coastal areas, etc. That is how India is physically diverse. Racial and linguistic diversity. India has people belonging to different races like Dravidians, Negroids, Mongoloids, etc. Linguistic diversity also is a special feature of India. Linguistic diversity means languages. There are more than 1,600 languages and dialects in India. The next diversity is social and religious diversity. India is regarded as a land of diverse religion, caste, faith, language, social systems, etc. India also has a variety of food and dress habits. It has both patriarchal and matriarchal family system. Patriarchal, uh, father is the head of the family and matriarchal, mother is the head of the family. Monogamy, polygamy and polyandry were practiced. These were the different types of marriages. Monogamy means one man marrying one woman. Polygamy, uh, one, one man marrying more than one woman. And polyandry, one woman marrying more than one man. So all these kind of marriages were practiced. And one more thing, if anyone wants detailed explanation of these answers, you can go to the chapter wise videos and you can see the detailed explanation. Here I am just uh, going through the points quickly. India also is a land of different religions like Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, Christianity etc. So in all these ways India has social and religious diversity. 
Next is economic diversity. India is a land of economic inequality. The resources are distributed unevenly. And we find different classes of people in India like the rich, poor, middle class etc. And some places are highly developed while some are underdeveloped. In spite of all these diversities, there are many unifying forces which have kept united. So this much is the first part of your answer that is diversity. Physical diversity, racial and linguistic diversity, social, economic and religious diversity. So all these uh, diversities we have discussed. Now let us see how is India united despite all these diversities. Then only the answer will be complete. So regarding unity, geographical unity. Himalayas in the north and oceans in the south have isolated India from the rest of the world and formed a separate geographical unit. Administrative unity. India has a uniform system of administration. It has its base from the Arthashastra of Chanakya or Kautilya. Many old dynasties of India like the Mauryas, Guptas, Mughals, Marathas etc. have uh, tried to bring political unity. Now uniform education and literature. Ancient India has uniform education and literature and Sanskrit language and Vedic literature including epics like Ramayana, Mahabharata etc. have brought a feeling of oneness among the people. Later during the British rule English became the common language that is lingua franca. Lingua franca is a shared language of communication used by people who speak different languages. See in India we had a lot of we have a lot of languages. So there should be a common language used for communication. So English became that uh, common or shared language of communication. Then religious and social ceremonies. Indians have diversities in different areas but they lead a life of harmony. They participate in religious and social ceremonies of each other. They also interdine with each other. This increase the feeling of unity among the people. And some recent changes like our constitution, government policies, economic and social condition, globalization, all these have reduced the differences among religion, caste, places, etc. People share their food habits, customs, traditions, all these things now people are sharing with each other. All these factors increase unity among Indians in spite of all the diversities. See, in spite of all the diversities which we have learned, India is united because of all these things. So like that you can complete the answer. So when the question is about unity in diversity, first you can write how India is diverse, what all differences are there. Then you can write in spite of all these diversities, how India is united. Okay, so I hope that answer is clear. The next 5 mark question, 32nd question. What were the measures taken by Ashoka for the spread of Buddhism? This is a very simple answer. Measures adopted for the spread of Buddhism. Ashoka spread Buddhism not only in India but also outside India. That you can write as an introduction. The main measures taken by him were First thing, he visited Buddhist holy places like Lumbini Garden, Gaya, Kushinagara etc. And he conducted discourses on religion, that is discussions on religion. So first thing is he visited Buddhist holy places. He built a large number of monasteries all over the empire. Ashoka built a large number of monasteries all over the empire. Then he spread the doctrines of Buddha by engraving them, engraving the doctrines on rocks, pillars, balls of caves etc. So like that he spread the doctrines of Buddha. He appointed officials called as Dharma Mahamatras, Yuktas and Rajukas to spread Dharma among the people. So Ashoka appointed officers called as Dharma Mahamatras, Yuktas and Rajukas to spread dharma among the people. Another officer appointed by him was Sri Adyaksha Mahamatra. This Sri Adyaksha Mahamatra was appointed to take care of women and bring religious awareness. Then the next thing, he organized the third Buddhist council at Pataliputra in 250 BC to settle the differences among the monks. 
he sent missionaries to different places like Afghanistan, Burma, Sri Lanka and Europe. That we have already said that he spread Buddhism outside India also. So he sent missionaries to different places like Afghanistan, Burma, Sri Lanka and Europe. He also sent his son Mahindra and daughter Sangamitra to Sri Lanka with a Bodhi sapling as a symbol of peace. So his son Mahindra and daughter Sangamitra were sent to Sri Lanka with a Bodhi sapling as a symbol of peace. Peace and sacrifice. He also undertook many welfare activities. Ashoka also undertook many welfare activities like digging wells, building rest houses, constructing hospitals, planting trees, uh, establishment of schools. All these kind of welfare activities were also undertaken by him. And his main motto was service and sacrifice. So all these measures were taken by Ashoka for the spread of Buddhism. So these are the two 5 mark uh, questions. I will continue uh, the 5 mark questions and the balance questions in the next video. So this uh, second paper will be uh, also explained in almost 5 or 6 parts. So please continuously learn all the uh, questions which I have discussed in the first paper as well as which I have discussed in this paper. Your continuous revision will help you score more in your exams. And also don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Your likes and shares will be of a great encouragement for me to make more and more videos. So I hope to see you all soon in the coming video. Thank you for watching.